in this uh, video revision lesson, we will be solving some past exam revision uh, uh, past exam revision questions on uh, paper two. You know, this uh, paper two is divided into three sections. Uh, section A is on um, physical chemistry. Uh, section B on inorganic chemistry. And uh, section C on organic chemistry. But because of the limitation of time, we are going to treat these three sections um, uh, independently. And today, we will be starting with section C, which is the organic, uh, uh, organic chemistry part of it. Uh, I, uh, before we continue, I really want to appreciate those of you who have subscribed to our channel. Once more, thank you for a job well done. We will really appreciate more of your comments. But to motivate us to keep on assisting you in your studies, please like the video, share, comment, and uh, most importantly, subscribe to our channel. Thank you, welcome. We want to continue today with the organic uh, chemistry part of our questions. This is um, a Cameroon GCE A level uh, chemistry, organic uh, chemistry section of the exam. It is a paper two, structured questions. Uh, I apologize for the poor quality of the question paper. We're starting with uh, number five, question number five. This is uh, June 2020. Question number five. This question relates to organic uh, compounds and uh, their reactions. An organic compound A contains hydrogen, carbon, chlorine, and a double bond. A. How would you identify the presence of one, a double bond? Uh, yes. Uh, this is an unsaturated uh, compound. This is an unsaturated compound. To identify a double bond in an organic compound, there are two methods. You can either use bromine water A bromine water test, or you use Bayer's reagent. Bayer's reagent. I will start with uh, number one. I will start with the first one, uh, which uh, I said uh, bromine water. I said uh, bromine water test. A uh, bromine water test. Bromine water, bromine water test, bromine water test. On that is bromine water test. This is what you write. The first thing is bromine water test. Because you state your main point before you can give the explanation. Because some students are not very good in trying to describe something, so examiners are interested in the major uh, in, the, in the major points. 
bromine um, bromine water test okay you can now say add bromine water containing tetrachloromethane you can add bromine water add bromine water containing tetrachloromethane which is c uh, cl4 add bromine water containing tetrachloromethane to an unsaturated compound if the orange color disappears then it contains a double bond that is just all if you add bromine water if you add bromine water to an uns uh, uh, bromine water to an unsaturated compound it does what the brown um, <clears throat> the, the orange color will disappear indicating the presence of a double bond Or you can say bromine water, uh, the double bond, it dechlorizes bromine water. That's just all. Any organic compound containing a double bond will decolorize bromine water. So if you add bromine water to any organic compound, to any organic compound containing a double bond, the orange color disappears, indicating the presence of a double bond. Another method is the Bayer's reagent. A Bayer's reagent. You can use the first one or you use the second one. Bayer's reagent. With Bayer's reagent, if there is a double bond, the color of the solution will change to brown. Write Bayer's reagent. Then you can state there, on addition of Bayer's reagent to an organic compound containing a double bond, the color will change to brown. Finish. Oh. Uh, uh, go, uh, there are four questions there. I mean, there are four marks. The other one is chlorine. How will you identify the presence of chlorine in an organic compound? This organic compound here, the organic compound that you were given, how will you identify chlorine? You know that for halides, you know that for halides, you want to identify halide, uh, the halide ion, like the chloride ion, the bromide ion, the iodide ion, there is a common reagent that we usually use, and that one we call it a silver nitrate test. A, t a, s a silver nitrate solution. If you add a silver nitrate solution to any substance containing any halide, if you add it to any substance containing chlorine, if you add it to any substance containing bromine, they are going to be precipitates that are formed. But in this case, this is an organic compound containing chlorine. We can now say addition of a freshly prepared. The first thing you write there is silver mirror test. Use use uh, silver mirror test. The main point. Use silver mirror test. Then you can describe. On addition of a freshly prepared solution of silver nitrate, oh, sorry. Oh, excuse me, please. Sorry. Silver nitrate, sorry. use silver nitrate test when you write use silver nitrate test you cannot you cannot proceed on addition on addition of a freshly prepared solution of silver nitrate to a sample of organic compound containing chlorine the presence of chlorine there is indicated by the formation of white precipitate so if you ask anything if you if you add this 
on addition of this to any solution, you will see that um, silver nitrate will give it will be it will give uh, this ion silver nitrate this ion plus it is aqueous plus the chloride ion. There will be a silver chloride which is solid form as precipitate. So, to how to uh, how to identify the presence of chlorine. You will now say use silver nitrate test. Then you can describe. Addition of solution of silver nitrate to a sample of organic compound containing chlorine. The presence of chlorine is indicated by the formation of white precipitate. We call it white precipitate. These are white precipitate white precipitate that are formed. These are white precipitate. So, any organic compound containing chlorine, if you add a freshly prepared uh, silver, nitrate, uh, silver nitrate solution to it, the presence of uh, chlorine there is indicated by the formation of white precipitate of silver chloride. That is just all. Uh, it takes us to the B part of it. It has to do with uh, calculations. The B part of it has to do with calculations. And uh, we are told if 0 0.485 gram of the compound A contains 0 0.120 gram of carbon, 0 0.01 gram of hydrogen, uh, calculate the empirical formula of the compound. Okay. The empirical formula of this compound. This is an organic compound that you have been given. We want you to, they want you to calculate the empirical formula. Okay. Calculating empirical formula for this compound, the first thing you will do here will be, they, they say the compound contains uh, carbon. The compound contains carbon hydrogen it contains carbon hydrogen and a chlorine a comp a hydrogen um, carbon hydrogen and chlorine and their masses are uh, carbon is uh, zero point carbon is zero point one two zero point one two gram hydrogen is zero point 0 0.01 uh, gram and uh, chlorine chlorine we were not given chlorine but remember they said 0 0.48 gram of g of a contains this this and that if we add all this it is not up to this it is not up to 0, 4, 0 0.485 and uh, we were told the organic compound contains from up here the organic compound contains hydrogen carbon and chlorine Therefore, the last one is chlorine. And in order to have the last one, it will be 0 0.485 minus this minus 0 0.12, 0 0.120 gram and 0 0.01 gram. And the difference there, you will add this, the difference there will be um, yeah, 0, will be 0 0.355 gram. It will be 0.355 gram. Okay, now that is the mass. Uh, this is the mass. We can say this is mass. That is the mass. Okay, we want to have the moles of this. The moles. The number of moles. You are given a formula. The formula is uh, to have the number of moles of a particular substance. You will divide the given mass by its uh, the relative atomic mass, and the relative atomic mass for for carbon is twelve. So now uh, the relative atomic mass for carbon is twelve. So our our number of moles will be zero point one two zero gram divided by twelve. 0 0.01 gram divided by uh, for hydrogen it is 1 
and uh, for chlorine is 0 0.355 gram divided by uh, 35.5 gram per mole. All these are gram per mole, gram per mole, gram per mole, so that the the gram the gram will cancel per gram and it will be left with the moles. And the number of moles here, if we do this division, our number of moles for carbon will be 0 0.0.0.01. 0 .0 our number of moles for this other one here will be 0 0.01. And the number of moles of this one here will be uh, that is uh, 0 0.355 gram divided by 35 point this we will have 0 0.01 or uh, no, uh, 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.01 0 0.01 0 0.01 now we divide by the and uh, all are the same so we have one one and a one and this gives us what it makes us to be uh, our empirical formula will be what our empirical formula in this case empirical formula will be empirical formula will have what will have carbon hydrogen and chlorine that will be what our empirical formula so our empirical formula our empirical formula after the calculation we will have only uh, we will have carbon, uh, hydrogen, and uh, chlorine. That will be our empirical formula. That will be our empirical formula. Now, it takes us, that is the answer. It takes us to the other section. We are told. Empirical formula, that is the one. Then two, uh, 0 0.4 gram, uh, 0.485 gram of uh, compound A re reacted completely with 1.7 gram of silver nitrate in the ratio 1 to 2. The molar mass of silver nitrate is 170 gram per mole. Determine the molecular mass of A. Yeah. To determine the molecular mass of this, okay, we have two. We have been told a reacted at a, re, uh, a reacted. Okay, two. The two part of it is a uh, two moles of silver. We have been given the mass of silver to be one point seven. Uh, this silver nitrate. So the number of moles of silver you have been given the make use of the information you are given on your question paper please so now you will be given the number of moles you have been given the mass of the organic compound which is of a and you have been given the mass of silver nitrate you have been given the mole ratio that they reacted with uh, with a now and you have been given the uh, the the mr or we call it the molar mass of uh, silver nitrate so in order to have the molar mass of uh, the molar mass of a what do we do First of all, make use of this information. Moles of silver nitrate. We'll now say the moles. The moles of silver nitrate. The mass of silver nitrate was what? 1.7. 1.7 gram. Divided by what? By the molar mass of silver nitrate is 170 gram per mole. And the, the number of moles of silver nitrate will be what? The number of moles of silver nitrate will be 0. 0.01 over 0 0.01 that is the number of moles of silver nitrate but remember we were told remember we were told they reacted in the ratio that is a we uh, remember we were told that a plus silver nitrate A plus silver, um, silver nitrate. A plus silver nitrate in the ratio what? In the ratio one to two. I mean, yeah. 
one, two, two. Okay, we want to make use of this information. We can now say, we can now say, if simple proportion, if, if two moles, here, two moles of silver nitrate carry out one mole of A, if two, if two moles, if two moles, silver nitrate um, react with react with one mole one mole of A then the number of moles of silver nitrate we got here was what? 0 0.01 then 0 therefore 0 0.01 moles of silver nitrate will react will react with x of a now what will be the value of x the value of x will be what x the number of moles of uh, a that will react will be what the number of moles of a will be what the moles of a will be zero 0 0.01 times 1 divided by 2. And the number of moles of A will be what? The number of moles of A will be um, 0. The number of moles of A will be what? 0. 0.005 moles A of the organic compound A. That will be the number of moles of A that will react. That will be the number of moles of A that will react. Having got the those number of moles of A, remember in stoichiometry, when we are in stoichiometry, when we are calculating the number of moles, now when you have the number of moles of a particular substance, to have the mass of that substance will be will do what? Remember, uh, there is, uh, remember from our expression moles, remember moles. Uh, moles is equals to what? Mass divided by molar mass. Molar mass, or what we call, you can call it MR. You can use this expression. If you use this expression and rearrange it, you will have everything. That is moles equal to mass all over molar mass. If we use this expression, if we use this expression, you will see that you use this expression, you will see that if we arrange all this, the mass will be what? The mass will be equal to the mass, uh, the mass. Oh, the uh, uh, sorry, the molar mass. So we are looking for the molar mass. We have been actually looking for the molar mass. The molar mass. <clears throat> the molar mass will now be equals to um, molar mass. So I say moles equals to mass divided by molar mass. Molar mass rearranging it. Molar mass, the molar mass, uh, which is uh, mR, will be equal to the mass. The mass divided by what? Divided by the number of moles. And uh, when we do that, substituting our value, our mass of A, we're given that A has a mass of 0 .0, 0 0.485. The mass of A is 0 0.4, um, 0 0.485 gram. And the moles of A that we calculated, the moles of A we calculated is what? Is 0 point zero zero five uh zero point zero zero five uh <clears throat> moles so now now our molar mass will be what our molar mass if we divide this by this our molar mass will be 97 97 gram because it's gram divided by moles gram per mole 
that will be our molar mass molar mass uh, m arrow of m arrow of a that is the molar mass of a m arrow is another short form for molar mass m arrow of a will be 97 gram per mole that is our answer 97 gram per mole so we can say the molar the, the molar mass the molar mass of a the molar mass of a the molar mass of a is 97 uh 97 uh sorry uh the molar mass of a is uh, 97 is 97 gram per mole 97 uh, gram per mole you have seen the calculation here then the molecular formula of a molecular formula of a that is the b part of it molecular formula of a how can we give the molecular formula of a the molecular formula of a would definitely be molecular formula of a now to have the molecular formula that is uh, the b part of it uh, B part of which is the molecular formula. Molecular molecular formula of compound of compound A. Now you have the molecular formula. So now <clears throat> what you will do will be in order to calculate the molecular formula, we will say the empirical formula, which is Empirical formula, which is uh, the C H C L C S C L, the empirical, the full molecular formula is supposed to have the molecular mass is equal to be the molecular mass. If we add all the related atomic masses in the molecular formula, is supposed to be equal to the molecular mass. So now, if we add this, this is supposed to be equal to what? It's, it's equal to what? It's equal to the uh, the molecular mass molecular or molar mass is supposed to be equal to the molar mass okay molar is equal to the molar mass and uh, this will be c h c h c l is equal to what 97 equal to 97 equal to 97 which is the uh, molar mass but if we add all these, we add the atomic, uh, the relative atomic mass of carbon, hydrogen, and chlorine. It cannot be up to this. Therefore, we now say there is a certain number. If we add all these, there is a certain number. We add all these it will be equal to that. Let's solve for the value of n. And in order to solve for this, uh, this value, uh, what we will do here will be we will have if we add this. The atomic, the related atomic number for carbon is 12. 12 plus 1 for oxygen, that is uh, uh, 13. Then 13 plus um, uh, chlorine is 35.5. Uh, chlorine is 35.5. Uh, if we add all this, uh, it will be equals to 48.5. That will be equals to 48. 48. Point five n equals to ninety-seven, and uh, what will be the value? The value of n will be equals to what two? The value of n will be equals to two. And if we now substitute two, substituting two, substituting two in our uh, in this, substituting two, substituting two. It will give us substituting to our molecular formula our molecular formula substituting to our uh, final molecular formula for the compound will be uh, 2 if n is equal to 2 2 times c will be c2 okay 2 times h will be equal to h2 okay 2 times cl it will be equal to cl2 and uh, this will be our molecular formula. 
that will be our molecular formula so now our molecular formula for this our molecular formula for this will be a c2 a h5 and a cl2 a cl2 then we are told give two this is already an akin is already an akin give two isomers of compound a okay isomers uh, compound a what are the isomers of compound a what are isomers isomers they have the same molecular formula but different uh, structural arrangement so now molecular formula they have the same molecular formula which is c2 h um, c2 h2 cl2 but different structural arrangement so the isomers here will be what since there are two we will say it is carbon carbon uh, give two isomers. Isomers of this compound. Isomers. Isomers of A. Isomers of A. Now, for an akin, it has a double bond. Akin must have a double bond, and we're told in the answer the compound has a double bond. This is it here. From the onset, they say carbon, hydrogen, carbon, chlorine and a double bond so there are two atoms uh, since there are two uh, carbon there there are two carbon there we will now say we have a carbon double uh, there are only two carbon so it will be a double bond a carbon carbon a carbon carbon then we have a hydrogen now there is one hydrogen here you can see hydro one hydrogen is here you can see it here hydrogen and there is another hydrogen here and there are two chlorines. We can now say this is chlorine. This is chlorine here. Uh, we can say this is chlorine here. And this is another chlorine here. We can rearrange this again and say this is how it is. Uh, we have carbon, carbon. There's carbon carbon and we have this is a hydrogen and this is another hydrogen hydrogen are on one side then chlorine on this other side is on the other side uh, chlorine and chlorine remember when we're doing isomerism this is a stereoisomer there are two types of stereo isomers. We have geometric isomerism and there's optical isomerism. Here, there is no optical um, um, property here. So what is here is geometric. Uh, this is a geometric isomer. And geometric isomer is, uh, is as a result of non-rotation about the carbon-carbon bond. The carbon-carbon bond cannot, uh, cannot rotate. It cannot rotate. That is why it results in isomers. Okay, difficulty for the carbon carbon term uh, for for the there's a difficulty for the carbon uh, carbon double bond to rotate. So that's why this result in isomer. And we said there are two types of geometric isomerism. We have the cis and the trans. Cis, that is, you see across the double bond that is trans. On this on one side of the double bond there is a cis. So we now call this one trans isomer because Chlorine and chlorine are across on open on the different side. So we now call this trans isomer. This is a trans isomer. And since chlorine and chlorine and hydrogen and hydrogen are on one side, on two different sides, we now say we call this cis. This is a cis isomer. This is a cis isomer. So there are two types of isomer here. We have one. This is the first one that I have given here, which is the trans isomer. This is the trans isomer, which is one. And the second one is the cis isomer of the compound. So if you did this, you are likely going to have all your marks. If you did this, you are likely going to have all your marks. So now, it takes us to uh, the last section 
we are done with uh, section C. Give two isomer. That is two marks. One isomer is one mark, and the other isomer is one mark. So please, uh, that is what you are supposed to do. Once more, as I said, you need to make use of your information. You need to make use of your information. You calculate the relative uh, the empirical formula using the mass divided by the molar uh, by the relative atomic masses. And then you divide by the smallest and you have your empirical formula. You are given the mass and the relative, uh, 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 the mass and the molar mass of uh, silver nitrate. You divide the mass by the, mole, uh, molar, uh, by the molar mass of silver nitrate. You have the number of moles of silver nitrate. And they say it was reacted in the ratio 1 is to 2. The mole ratio is 1, uh, one uh, of the organic compound reacting with 2 moles of silver nitrate. You take a simple proportion. To, for you to better understand, if two moles of silver nitrate can react with one mole of A, then the number of moles of the silver nitrate we calculated will react with how many moles of the organic compound A? We calculated it, and we had the we had we saw that our number of moles of A is 0 0.05. Now, a relation says moles equals to mass all over the molar mass. Now we rearrange it to have the molar mass because we have been told to look for the uh, 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 the molar mass. Now, the molar mass here, we re after rearranging this uh, formula here, the molar mass will be what? Will be mass divided by number of moles, and if we divide that, we will have 97 gram per mole, which is the molar mass of A. Now, that is the molar mass of A. We are told to look for the molecular formula of A. Now, you, when you add all the relative atomic masses of all the elements present in the compound, you will have the molar mass but when we add this this is an empirical formula uh, this is an empirical formula it does not contain that so we need to multiply it by a certain factor that will give all that will give us the molar mass so you, the factor is n and when we solve for n when we solve for n we saw that n is equals to 2 and if we substitute n in this equation in this formula here our um, uh, our uh, formula mass will be c2 h2 cl2 when we do that, that will be the formula mass of the compound. That will be the formula mass. Now, isomers, since they say the compound is has a double bond, so it is an arcane. It's a chloroarcane. So in this case, what we usually uh, what we usually do for this compound, we can say it is one two one two dichloroethene. One two dichloroethene. So now, or oh, this other one to <clears throat> So now we have a trans and a cis because of what? Oles, ole akins or, or, or trans and the cis isomer only exists in compound containing double bonds. And uh, why why so? I said double bond exists here as a result of non-rotation about the carbon-carbon double bond. That's why isomers will, that's why isomer exists in uh, uh, in in Arkin, because what well, there's no rotation about the carbon carbon double bond. It took us to the second part of the equation that has to do with uh, 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 the amines. The amines, we are told that amines here are, they say, complete the table below. Uh, D part, D1, complete the table below, giving the structure and the name of primary, secondary, and tertiary amine with molecular formula. C3H9. Okay, you know that amines, um, uh, amines, you know amines, they have uh, NH2. So to have a primary amine, to have a primary amine, remember that an amine is, this is how you can look for amine, by substituting ammonia, that is ammonia molecule is like this, this is ammonia molecule. So it has a double bond there. So now if we substitute one amine, we will have this. If we substitute one amine for the hydrogen of this, we will have uh, N. Uh, it will be N. Uh, let me say we substitute one, one amine here. Okay, if I substitute this one here, If I substitute this here by an alkyl group or by an aryl group, alkyl are 
uh, known, uh, <clears throat> these are long chain or branch chain molecules. Then RI groups, we are talking of aromatic groups. If I do this here, let me say R1, um, R1, that is, we now call this a primary amine. If I say substitute the next hydrogen by substituting the next hydrogen, I will call it, that is uh, nitrogen here. Okay. If I substitute the next hydrogen in the ammonia, that is RO1. Then I substitute it by RO2. Now, with, this is a secondary amine. Now, if I substitute the third hydrogen, if I substitute the third hydrogen, uh, yeah, uh, like this one, this is RO1, no, this is uh, RO1, RO2, and RO3. So all these, have, this is a tertiary amine. This is a secondary amine. So by substituting the number of hydrogens on the uh, on the ammonia molecule, it gives you the type of amine you have. So now by substituting one, we have a primary. Arrow could be a methyl group. Arrow could be this methyl group. Arrow could be a methyl group. Arrow could be an ethyl group. It could be an ethyl group. Um, arrow could be a propyl group. Uh, Arrow group could be a, a butyl group. So any alkyl group will uh, any um, uh, if any alkyl group substitute this one, it will give you a different uh, amine uh, group. So now by substituting one hydrogen here by R1, it could be a methyl group, it could be an ethyl group. We have a primary amine. By substituting two hydrogen, we have secondary amine. By substituting all the hydrogen, we will now have a tertiary amine. An example of this one. An example of this, if we substitute this, for example, and say D is this, and we now have uh, NH2, like in this case here, we, uh, like in the first case here, we have substituted this one. We have, in the first case here, we have substituted this arrow here to by a methyl group. We will have NH2. And the NH2, we will call that we call it methylamine. Methyl, this is a methyl group, methylamine. If it was an ethyl group there, we will call it uh, ethylamine. So now a weak substitute three in that order, in that order. So now going back to our formula, I mean uh, to our question. Going back to our question, they said. Going back to our question, okay, we were given, our question, we were given C and, we were given C, um, um, C3H9N, 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 C3, H9, and uh, N. And we are told to do what? Primary, secondary, and tertiary. Okay. This is the formula. Now, the first one for primary is what? We, for, for primary, we need to have only one hydrogen that is being substituted. So for primary, what we will have will be, it will be nitrogen, hydrogen, and hydrogen. Then, this one will be what? Now, this one will be what? It will be an eta. Uh, uh, this one will be a proper group. Three carbons must be here in order to fulfill this condition. The three carbons must be there. So the three carbons here will be what? We will have a carbon, a carbon, a carbon. You see it? One, two, three, these are hydrogens. Hydrogens, hydrogen, 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 hydrogen. Now, C3, one, two, three. For hydrogens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We now have our hydrogen. So we can now summarizely say our compound is CH3, CH3, 
CH2, uh, CH2, what? We can say NH2. That is our propyl, that is our primary amine. And that primary amine, the name is what? The primary amine, the name is, we say the structure is a CH3, CH3, CH2, 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 NH2. Because only one of the hydrogen has been substituted. So we call it a primary amine. And uh, the, the, what will be the name? The name here is one, the alkyl group is one, two, three. There are three carbon. So we call it a propyl. Propyl is three. So we call it propylamine. We call it propyl. So now if we go again and we do our substitution again. If we go again and do our substitution for the next carbon, let's say uh, we want to do for the next carbon, which is uh, um, we want to substitute for another carbon here. So in that case, we will have in that case, we will have this one here. Um, in that case, we will have yes, and uh, we want to substitute the hydrogen here, here, in order to give us uh, just we want to substitute two hydrogen now. So we let's substitute two hydrogen with uh, a methyl group. I mean, uh, with a methyl group. Uh, let me say a C. Uh, okay, hydrogen, a hydrogen, another hydrogen. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So our form, this other formula here will be a CH3, CH2, CH3, CH2. Since there is a methyl group here, we can say bracket CH3 NH. So our now are the name of the name of our formula will now be equal to what? If we write it here, we will have a CH3, a CH3, a CH2, a bracket CH3, then N, NH. And we'll call it ethyl methylamine. Ethyl methylamine ethyl methylamine so now if we substitute the last hydrogen let's say we want to substitute the last hydrogen so that we want to substitute the last hydrogen so that we can have a tertiary amine what we will do will be this uh we are going to substitute it all, all with uh, with methyl groups so now this will be a methyl group now we want to substitute this other hydrogen here with a methyl group. Um, we want to substitute the hydrogen here with a methyl group. So what we will do will be with a methyl group here. What we are going to do here will be um, it will be we we'll put a methyl group there will be a carbon hydrogen hydrogen. And another hydrogen. So now, uh, the formula of our compound. The formula of this compound here will be a uh, CH3. Yeah, there we can still write it this way. We can say it is nitrogen. A uh, CH3, a uh, CH3, and a uh, CH3. Where we can summarize it and put it as. There are three um, methyl groups. So we can say CH3 in bracket 3 and uh, a nitrogen. That is a tertiary amine. And uh, we can put it in our question paper on, on our answer sheet as a CH3, a CH3 bracket 3. 
and nitrogen. And in and in naming it, we cannot say it is trimethylamine. Trimethyl. Trimethyl amine or amine. Trimethyl amine. So you can put it like that. Okay. Uh, it takes us to the D2 part of the question. The D2 part of the question, after knowing this, the D2 part of the question. Okay. The D2 part of the question. Okay. Primary amines can be prepared from amides by Hoffman's degradation. Primary amine can be prepared uh, from amides by Hoffman degradation. Write a general equation for this. There are many ways of preparing primary amines. The examiner has asked us to use but Hoffman degradation. And with Hoffman degradation, we have the reagent which is... Uh, Hoffman, uh, Hoffman degradation, we have the reagent. And the reagent is a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide. That is a, a strong alkali. Reagent is a strong alkali. Strong alkali reagent. It's a strong alkali, which will, it could be um, strong aqueous it's a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and um, a halogen and a halogen and a halogen. The halogen could be bromine, bromine, it could be chlorine or bromine. So we will have a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and uh, chlorine or bromine and uh, now we will have to heat it we will have to heat it at about 70 degrees celsius we will heat it about 70 degrees celsius and our equation will be what we will have this for the Hoffman degradation this is what we will have using this we will have the arrow represents the alkyl group. Uh, that then an amide has a, a carbonyl group them, and uh, and uh, an amide group. That is an amide. So now when we hit this on the amide, now we will have a primary amine. The primary amine will be. We call it the primary amine because only one hydrogen has been substituted from the ammonia. That is why you see arrow dash NH2 plus a carbon dioxide is released. A carbon dioxide is released. But the conditions are what? I told you that on the equation you will say bromine. When you heat an amide with bromine, you could bromine over yeah, let's choose bromine. Bromine in Heat an amide with bromine in aqueous sodium hydroxide. This aqueous, I'm putting water here for aqueous. Okay. So now the equation is the amide, the amide contains a carbonyl group. Then with the amine group, the, the amine group. So you now heat the amide in bromine heat it with bromine in aqueous sodium hydroxide you could see say aqueous potassium hydroxide and uh, you have a primary amine and carbon dioxide is being released so that is just what you do so the condition is uh, the, uh, a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and uh, bromine or chlorine that's just all then 
heat it to about 70 degrees Celsius. And this is the general equation. That's what you are supposed to do. But remember, remember that for the purpose of revision, you can still produce amide by reduction. You can still produce amide through a redu uh, 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 through reduction process. This one is just for revision. It is not for the answer. This is the answer for our equation. Hoffman degradation in ammonia, uh, with ammonia, I mean uh, with bromine in aqueous sodium hydroxide. But for purpose of revision, excuse me, for purpose of revision, you could still produce it by reduction using lithium tetrahydrido aluminate in dry ether. In that case, this will be the equation. You will have the amide. You have the amide. This is the amide. It will give you a primary. Um, uh, oh, sorry. We have amide plus. This four hydrogen have been donated by lithium tetrahydrido aluminate. This is what you will have. Uh, CH2, NH2 plus water. And the condition here is that it is reduction. You are going to use lithium tetrahydrido aluminate. You are going to use this, and this process is called reduction. Reduction, you are adding hydrogen. Because hydrogen is provided by this, by lithium tetrahydrido aluminate. So there are four hydrogen are added here. The hydrogen will enable you to have a molecule of water, and will enable you to have the, to, to convert this carbon to CH2. So you, this, this is another method, it's method two, by reduction. But it is not involved in our answer. It is not involved in our answer, please. It's just for the purpose of revision. It's for the purpose of revision. So our answer is a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide uh, and uh, a halogen. So you heat an amide uh, with uh, a halogen, which is bromine, in a strong potassium hydroxide. And this is the equation. This is the equation. You give that, you are fine. Um, you can put it here like this. Uh, Hoffman, uh, that is um, a part of it. You can put it as uh, arrow. Yeah. Uh, mine. You have arrow. And uh, what you will put here will be bromine in uh, sodium hydroxide, bromine in aqueous sodium hydroxide. That is, you can put water there. Yeah. So this is the equation the amide, this, yeah, to give you a primary amide. Okay. Um, it takes us to give reagent and reaction condition. We are already given that. I said the reagent is a strong aqueous sodium hydroxide and uh, and uh, bromine. The condition you heat it to about uh, 70 degrees Celsius. Now, what future of amine is responsible for their being basic? The future of amine that is responsible for their being basic. Okay. The future of our mind that is responsible for their being basic is uh, this one. For a mind to be basic, a mind will only act as basis because of what? I told you that a mind, look at the structure of the mind. Let me say this uh, nitrogen. I said
nitrogen has a lone pair on it. So, what future of a mind that will make them being basic? I say the future of a mind that makes them basic is, <clears throat> excuse me, because of the presence of the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. Because of the presence of the lone pair of electrons, lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. That is what makes that is the only future that makes a mind to be basic because of the presence of the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom. For the purpose of revision, let me give the reason. Remember, a, uh, remember, a base is a proton acceptor. A base is a proton acceptor. And an acid is a proton donor. Since a base is a proton acceptor, it must have the lone pair of electrons to donate to the hydrogen ion to form a coordinate bond. So, all bases must have a lone pair of electron to donate to form a coordinate bond with a hydrogen ion that comes in. So, any hydrogen ion that is coming in, for instance, let's say this is a hydrogen ion that is coming in. It does what? The, the, base, must, uh, the base must donate the lone pair of electron to it. So, the future of the, the, the main characteristic or the main future that makes a mind to be basic is the presence of the lone pair of electron the lone pair of electron that's just all I'm, I'm not giving this reason for the purpose of revision that a base is a proton acceptor it is a proton acceptor because it donates its lone pair of electron to the hydrogen ion forming a coordinate bond and an example of this is let me say this is an uh, this is an amine for example, this amine here, Ag, we have this amine, uh, NH2, with the lone pair of electron here. It will react with incoming hydrogen ion to do what? It will react with incoming hydrogen ion by donating a lone pair of electron to this hydrogen ion. It will donate the lone pair of electron to, to the hydrogen ion. And the bond form will be what? It will be a coordinate bond. It will be arrow. Because this one will attach itself here. So that property is the presence of the hydrogen, uh, um, the presence of the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. It takes us to suggest so uh, uh, this one so presence um what feature of a mind responsible for being busy i already mentioned it the presence of lone pair of electron or uh, the presence uh, of uh, lone pair lone pair of electrons on on the nitrogen atom Presence of lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom. So just one way of increasing the basicity of an amine. That was June 2020. So just one way of increasing the basicity of an amine. Okay, how can you increase the, basic, uh, the basicity of amine? The thing is this. How can you... The basicity of amine will, deter, will, will depend on the availability it will depend on the availability of the lone pair of electron. The only way you can make the lone pair of electron on nitrogen available for bonding, that is increasing the basicity. So the first reason we will give here will be, the first reason we will give here, uh, we will give here will be what? One, by making available the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom 
to burn with this one by making available by making available the loan perm the loan perm of electrons the loan pair of electrons the loan pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom to bond with hydrogen on the nitrogen atom to bond with hydrogen ion so by making available the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen atom to bond with this or you can say or alternatively you can say the only the way you can increase the basicity you can say by increasing the number of archive groups or electron donating groups on the nitrogen atom that's all by increasing by increasing the number of the number of archive groups the archive groups we call them electron donating groups donating groups electron donating group on the nitrogen on the nitrogen on the nitrogen this has a positive inductive effect They have a positive inductive effect, making making the electrons making the electrons readily available to bond with In that case, in that case, primary amine, in that case, primary amine are less basic than secondary amine. And secondary amine are less basic than tertiary amine. So, which one is the strongest? Which one is the strongest? The strongest base is the tertiary amine. Strong, um, tertiary is stronger than uh, secondary, and the secondary is stronger than uh, uh, primary. And primary is stronger than ammonia. So we are saying that the only way to make the basicity, to increase the basicity of an amine, is by increasing the number of archive groups, uh, uh, archive groups or electron donating groups. For instance, I said this is an amine. Uh, this is an amine. Uh, let's say this is a methyl group. This is a methyl group. And this is a methyl group. Remember that these are electron donating. These are electron donating. They are electron donating. Okay. I take another example like this is an amine here. So, this is a tertiary amine and this is only a primary amine. Now, these are electron donating. All these archive groups, these are archive groups, they are donating electron on the nitrogen. They are increasing more of the, they are increasing the number of electrons on nitrogen. And they are making electrons available for bonding. They are making electrons available for nitrogen to give out to form coordinate bond. And when you form a coordinate bond by donating a lone pair of electrons, you are more basic. That is a basic um, um, characteristic. 
So three different electron donating group will increase more hydro, uh, more number of electron on the nitrogen atom than only one electron donating group or one alkyl group. So in that case, tertiary amine are more basic than primary amine because there are more electrons that are being donated to the nitrogen, making the electron more available for bonding with hydrogen ion than in the case of a primary amine. In that case, we are concluding that the basicity of a mine can be increased by can be increased by increasing the number of alkyl groups or electron donating groups on the nitrogen. This has a positive inductive effect, making electrons readily available to bond with hydrogen. Again, for you, you can state briefly, you cannot explain because it, by making available the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen to bond with hydrogen ion. That is just all. By doing that, I think we are done with only one question. We will go back, we will be starting with the other question on this topic. So once more, this is June 2000 and 2020. This is June 2020, question number five of the Cameroon GCE A level chemistry syllabus, section C. On organic chemistry, we have answered the first question, uh, question that has to do with double bond using bromine water or bias reagent. Then the second question that has to do, identify chlorine by using a silver nitrate solution, a freshly prepared silver nitrate solution. And the uh, identification is the formation of white precipitate of silver chloride. Then we went into stoichiometry by doing calculating the empirical formula for the compound, using the empirical formula, using the information that was given, and then we calculated the moles of, uh, uh, we calculated the number of moles of silver nitrate, using the number of moles of silver nitrate, the number of moles of silver nitrate, and the mole ratio to calculate, to calculate the number of moles of, the, uh, the number of moles of organic compound, we use the number of moles of organic compound to calculate the molar mass by multiplying uh, by dividing the, the mass by the number of moles we had the molar mass. We use the molar mass and the empirical formula to calculate the to calculate the formula mass, the formula mass of the compound. And we use the formula mass of the compound to calculate or the molecular formula. Uh, to calculate, uh, to to uh, to come out with isomers that are being formed by this compound, it's an alkene. The isomers, we noticed that it was only one type of uh, isomer, which is geometric isomerism. The cis and trans isomers that resulted from that. Then we went further on our minds. How we went all further on amines, how to identify a primary amine by substituting alkyl groups on the uh, by substituting the, uh, the hydrogens on the ammo on ammonia. And when you substitute one hydrogen, you form a primary amine. Two hydrogen atoms substituted by different alkyl groups will we form a secondary. And when the three hydrogen on the three hydrogen on the ammonia is are uh, substituted, we form a tertiary amine. In that case, we were given C3H9N to, to come out to deduce the different classes of amine that this compound can form. We came out with propyl amine, ethyl methyl amine, and the trimethyl amine. And I gave the structures here, you saw them. Then how amine, primary amine, can be prepared using Hoffman degradation. I gave an equation of an amide that is being heated with bromine in aqueous. A strong aqueous sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and a primary amine is formed and a release of carbon dioxide i went further and said they could also be produced by through a reduction process using lithium tetrahydride aluminate but that is not involved in the answer is for the purpose of revision so i went further and i said um what futures of a mine is responsible for their being basic i said that the, the the condition that make a mine to be basic 
is the presence of the presence of the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen atom. Bases are pro uh, uh, um, uh, bases are proton acceptors by doing what they accept proton by donating their lone pair of electron to the proton. That is, they donate the lone pair of electron to the hydrogen ion, and uh, those forming a coordinate bond or a dative covalent bond. And uh, I did that here. So the presence of the lone pair of electron on the nitrogen makes them to be busy. Then we went further to say, suggest so one way of increasing the basicity of an amine. And one way of increasing the basicity of an amine, I said two, there are two ways. By making available the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen to bond with hydrogen ion. So as far as, as far as the, uh, as far as, or as available as the lone pair of electrons are there for coordinate bonding, that is a reason. So you can go further to explain that by increasing the number of alkyl groups, electron donating groups on the nitrogen atom. By doing this, so if you increase them by, increase, by substituting the hydrogen on the ammonia, we increase it from primary, secondary, and tertiary amine. This electron donating group help to donate electron on the nitrogen and making nitrogen atom having more electrons to bond with the hydrogen ion. So increasing the number of alkyl group or electron donating group is one factor that makes available the lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen to bond with hydrogen ion. So we'll be going um, uh, to the uh, next question that has to do with organic synthetic roots. Organic synthetic roots. That we will trick that in our next video. Thank you very much. Once more, fellow learners, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, please subscribe and uh, do not forget to hit the notification bell. Coming up soon will be the next question. Thank you very much for watching.